Hey, my name is Max Goldstein. Today we are flying CG3+. 3+, is my second favorite airplane, and I'll tell you all about it in this video. Oftentimes, when people choose a jet, they look at the interior size. They look at the top speed. They don't take into account the ease of maintenance and everyday operation. CJ sits very low to the ground. It actually helps uh, during the pre-flight service and uh, you can put it into a smaller hangar. You don't need to disconnect uh, the torque link when the plane is towed, which means pre-flight is going to be much easier and faster. Trailing link landing gear will make every landing a nice one. CJs don't have gear overhaul in 10 years like Phenoms and many other jets. Gear overhaul on other airplanes starts at $100,000 and will uh, take about a month. CJs have two baggage compartments. One large one in the back, where you can put large suitcases, skis, or golf clubs. And you got a smaller one in front. It's very convenient to use it when you fly alone or when you fly with small bags. You just throw in the bags, get inside, and go flying. After all, what good does the speed make if pre-flight and all the checks take a long time? You can check the oil through the side glass and stay clean. You can check and service the hydraulic fluid without having to go into a narrow, dirty spot. Checking and servicing nitrogen is easily done through the forward baggage compartment. Williams FJ44 engines produce 2,820 pounds of thrust and are fully controlled by FADEC. FADEC will monitor all the parameters and will set the most efficient fuel flow. Airplane that we are flying today is equipped with Tamarack active winglets. Winglets reduce induced drag and increase efficiency. The airplane will actually reach flight level faster and accelerate faster, reducing the fuel burn by about 5%. In CJ3+, when you install winglets, also, wingspan increases by about 7 feet. The winglets at increased wingspan redistributes lift closer to the uh, tips, making the wing more efficient. In case of turbulence or maneuvering, when the G load increases, Tamarack active camber surface will move up, reducing the lift and unloading the wing. So there is no need to modify the wing structure. Right? Seven, right? Yeah, by, by both wings. Yeah. Seven feet, I told you. I yeah. told him, I said, wow. This Amazing. Because you actually you actually climb a lot faster. Of it climbs course. to 45,000 feet in yeah, 25 minutes. Exactly. Better exactly. than uh, better than like the bigger jets. When I saw the wingspan, I was like, whoa. Yeah, it's usually it's up to here. Right here. And yeah. And so this. The ceiling height in the CG3 Plus is 57 inches. Length is 58 inches. It's not a lot, but most of the time in flight you spend sitting down, relaxing or doing some work. The seat moves out into the middle of the cabin, so you get more room. You can also recline the seat all the way down into a comfortable sleeping position. There are jet beds available for CG3+. You can inflate a mattress and have a full flat bed. If you got four adults in the club sitting, you can move the seat all the way back and you will have enough room for uh, normal size adults. This aircraft is equipped with two 110 volt outlets and a satellite phone. CG3 Plus has a toilet. Basically, it's a bucket where you can fill blue water and it will recirculate this water with every flush. A lot of times people just leave it dry and then you have to take it out and carry it through the cabin to empty it. That's why CG3 Plus Gen 2, which will be delivered starting 2025, has an external serviceable left. You can spend up to five and a half hours in this airplane, so the toilet is going to be used. In order to save the volume, there is a pilot relief valve installed. You press this valve, and differences in pressure between the pressurized cabin and the outside will suck everything out. It actually works really well. 3 Plus has a uh, coffee pot. To fill it up, you need to take it out. So basically, it's a stainless steel tank with a heating element. How much do you think it costs? Let me know in the comments down below. CJs used to have a door closing switch inside the frame. You can feel it with your finger. In 3 Plus, Cessna decided to add another switch under the handle. So everybody is pulling the handle to close the door. The door is closed. We looked at the mechanical indications that the door is locked, but we still have a door open message. Guess why? Because they put the switch over here, so now you have to press the handle. 
and every CGI flu, the handle is always shaking a little bit. To fix it, you need to disassemble entire door. More is not always better. When you get into the cockpit of a CJ3+, Plus, you can see that it was uh, cleaned up in comparison to the old CJs. Some of the systems, including pressurization and lights, got programmed into the G3000. The switches got grouped in a more convenient order. For example, when you're about to take off, you can just uh, turn on four of those switches and you're gonna turn on the pitot heats, anti-collision lights, and the landing lights. But you can still see that it's a classic CJ. You even get the manual windshield valves. Yes, the windshields are heated with bleed air in this airplane. Is this the most effective system? Probably not. But if you need to replace the windshields, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than the windshields that are heated electrically, and they're gonna last you a lot longer. You still have the mechanical circuit breakers. Out of my experience, if the maintenance opens up the circuit breaker, especially if it has uh, a white cap like this, it's not always noticeable. I've seen so many pilots miss it. I missed it myself. So electronic circuit breakers, uh, such as those you can see on Eclipse 500, are a lot better. A good airplane should be easy to fly. Getting ready for the flight is pretty easy. You just press the initialize button, check the database status, do the weight and balance, sync the fuel, click next, and the system is gonna tell it, take it to the flight plan. It already knows we're in Opaloka. We're flying from Opaloka to Opaloka. We're gonna put a point in the middle. We're gonna click next. We're gonna enter our Clurus altitude of uh, 17,500 feet for today, for our, the demo flight today. Click next. We're gonna select runway nine or left, which is in use. I'm not gonna enter wind because uh, headwind will uh, reduce the takeoff distance calculation, but uh, I, I wanna see how much runway I'm gonna take with zero wind. Our temperature is 2.8, so 2.9 is close enough. I'm gonna use red. Our takeoff config is gonna be flaps 15, takeoff factor one, and our takeoff distance today is gonna be 2,640 feet, and we have 8,000 feet available, and we got our speeds. I'm gonna accept the speeds, and, and the system is gonna send them to the PFD. By the way, the speeds did not appear because my flaps are in the up position. So the speeds will only appear when the flaps are set for the correct position. We are checking the fire warning. Aft baggage smoke. Aft baggage smoke. No, left that the system fire. actually says right what's happening, fire. like left engine fire or right Forward. engine fire. So you don't have to guess left what it is. It's not fire. a fire bell, right it's not a fire tone. It tells left you what's happening. Smoke. Same is gonna happen Forward. with the landing gear. This aircraft is equipped with the radar bias system. So in case of an engine failure, it's gonna assist the pilot with pressing radar towards the operating engine side. Then we click next. We can see that uh, we got each box checked and we can accept initialization. So we are ready to go now. The only thing that's left to do is just uh, check ourselves with the checklist and uh, we can start the engines. Right engine start and two rotates. 14%, ignition, ITT rising, and one rising. Generator is offline, which is normal. Propulsion on, engine anti ice on, watching for the ITT increase, checking priority, and gonna check the ground flaps. CJ has ground flaps, so when you land, you can put the ground flaps into 55% position, and the speed brakes will also extend. If you do power, it will retract the speed brakes. And as soon as I set the flaps back into 15, the speeds will appear, which means that speeds and flaps are in the same position. What I like about the 3 Plus is its power. Even though this plane is bigger than a straight CJ, usually it requires less runway. Because you're not taking off with uh, full tanks or full of people, so you're well under your max takeoff weight. Also, when you get to your cruise altitude of 450, you burn about as much fuel as a straight CJ would burn at flight level 410. After all, the higher the jet flies, the less the fuel would burn. The handling itself 
It's a Cessna, not the most responsive airplane out there, but it's not uh, made to be a responsive plane. Even though the plane is uh, pretty big, I'm six foot two and I'm a little bit tight in this cockpit. I have to sit with the seat in the most aft position and the pedals in the most forward position and I'm still uh, pretty tight. Plus you got the control column over here. Obviously if you had a side stick you would have a lot uh, more room. I think uh, this cabinet should uh, be either removed or made thinner. Let's do some steep turns to see how the airplane is handling and to see how the active windows work. When we do steep turns, g-force increases and the active camber surface will raise to unload the wing. Well, a CJ is a CJ. It feels very stretchy on the controls. It's not meant to be a fighter. It's a very good, stable IFR machine, though. And let's see at what airspeed will this airplane stall. We're actually going to take it to a full stall, just to demonstrate how much windless make a difference. The airspeed is 85 knots, and the plane is still handling well. Now we got the stick shaker. I'm going to take it to full aerodynamic stall. 79 knots, 78 knots, 76 knots, and we get a buffet. And the plane goes to one wheel. Let it accelerate, let the angle of attack decrease, and then we can start pitching up. So the full aerodynamic stall was uh, about 76 knots, almost like a single engine. So why do I like CJ3 Plus so much? Well, first of all, it's a single pilot plane, and if you want to fly yourself, the only option is uh, having a single pilot airplane. Its performance is amazing for a single pilot airplane. You can uh, fly it for five and a half hours. You can do more than 2,000 nautical miles. You only need 3,000 foot of runway at sea level most of the time. Also, I love the avionics. G3000 has been built with the pilot in mind. Garmin knew what user experience and user interfaces. Everything is very readable. The fonts are uh, very readable. You don't need a manual to use this avionics, and I think it should be made this way, because easy and intuitive avionics built for a safer plane, for a safer pilot, for a safer flight. If you want to fly a plane like this, how long is it going to take? Well, it all depends how you approach your training. If you approach your training correctly from the beginning, it's going to be much easier for you. You can start with the SR-22. If you start with a slower plane, it's going to be a lot harder for you to get used to higher speeds. So the best way, in my opinion, is to start with SR-22, get your private, get some experience, get your instrument rating, fly it a little bit, and then you can move up to something like an Eclipse. You don't need a step in between, you don't need a turboprop, and you don't need a piston twin. After flying an Eclipse for a couple of years, you can consider something like this. And uh, you're going to be a safe pilot if you approach training correctly. We're going to select an approach. I'll select runway 1-2, load and activate it. And then I'm also going to go to performance and select our landing performance. We're using runway 1-2. Temperature is 2.8, so we have 6,000 foot of runway available and we only need 2,500 feet. If you compare uh, CJ3 Plus with the Phenom 300, in my opinion, 3 Plus is a better value for money. Yes, it's a little bit smaller, but at the same time, it's much easier to operate, much easier to maintain. It's cheaper to maintain and operate. So if you fly yourself, CJ3 Plus is definitely a way to go. If you've got professional pilots, well, uh, maybe Phenom 300 will be better in the back. We got a flight path vector which shows us exactly where we're gonna end up. Once we're aligned with the runway you can just put uh, the green flight path vector on the runway and you're gonna know that you're gonna end up over there. Also we got a convenient angle of attack indicator right below our speed tape. Angle of attack of 0.6 will indicate correct VRF in any configuration that the airplane is currently in. Gear down to green, flaps coming down to landing. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. Left 
Delta Ben, Tango 8, the Phantom Blue with you. Never 76 Golf, uh. Let me know what you think about CG3 Plus or Tamarack Windex. Contact me if you have any questions. See you next time.